It's horrifying when a child attacks a parent. We can't understand such an important bond so badly broken. It almost makes sense when we find the child was troubled or ill. But when it's a kid from a loving home with plenty of advantages, it's nothing short of inconceivable. Today's stories involve kids who carried out the ultimate evil deed, slaughtering their families. An Iowa college student, Alexander Ken Jackson, 20, is charged with causing the death of his parents and younger sister on June 15, 2021. He claims he's innocent and that a masked intruder is behind his family's demise. Jackson is implicated in gunning down his father, Jan Jackson, 61, mother, Melissa Jackson, 68, and 19-year-old sister, Sabrina, according to law enforcement. Police responded to the home in the 4400 block of Oakleaf Court in Cedar Rapids after reports of an altercation came in around 8.30 a.m. All three family members were found inside the residence. Jackson had a gunshot wound in his foot and was rushed to an area hospital. He was later arrested in connection to the incident. He refuted any involvement in his family's demise and insisted his foot was hurt by a masked man following a struggle over a rifle, according to a criminal complaint. He told investigators he'd awoken to the sound of gunfire in the early hours of the morning. The suspected weapon, a 22 caliber Browning semi-automatic rifle, was located on the property. Jackson's explanation to authorities was that his father had placed the firearm on the family fireplace the evening before the tragedy. Jackson also told authorities that his father had told him to find a job or move out of the residence. Suspiciously, there were no signs of a break-in at the house where the family had lived for a decade. Prosecutors flatly rebuked Jackson's version of the tragic events during his first court appearance. Sabrina Jackson was a 2020 Kennedy High School graduate in Cedar Rapids. Her brother also attended the school. According to family and friends, she loved writing, playing in the school band, and was a member of a student democratic organization. She was once chosen to introduce former presidential candidate Andrew Yang at a climate change event. Alexander and Sabrina Jackson were both enrolled at the University of Iowa in the spring semester. This situation is the first case of its kind in Cedar Rapids in almost four decades, police said. The last recorded triple homicide was in 1982, when two men carried out a horrifying attack on three family members, including two children. Jackson was booked into Lynn County Detention Center. Sixth, Judicial District Judge Casey Jones set bond at three million cash only. No previous criminal history is apparent. He has requested a public defender. A 14-year-old, Mason Wayne Sisk, confessed to taking the of his entire family at their Alabama home late one night in September of 2019, including his little sister and two younger brothers, police said. The targets also included the boy's father, John Sisk, 38, and Mary Sisk, his 35-year-old stepmom. The officials say a 14-year-old killed his family inside their Elkmont, Alabama home. The teenager called police late to say he had heard gunshots while in the basement. When police arrived at the home in the town of Elkmont, the boy said he had run out of the home after hearing the gunshots. However, investigators later discovered discrepancies in his statement and called him in for further questioning. Mason Wayne Sisk then confessed to taking the of all five members of his family with a nine millimeter handgun. He told police that he had recently found out that Mary, his stepmom, was not his biological mom. Three of his injured family members lost their lives at the scene, while two others were airlifted to a hospital, but the medical staff was not able to save them. Sisk led police to where he said he tossed the handgun on the side of the road near the house. He faces capital charges related to the slaying of his family. His probation officer submitted a report to the court saying he has not shown any sign of remorse. While in detention, he has not talked about his family at all. Authorities decided to charge Sisk as an adult. Since 2019, he has been behind bars at a juvenile detention center without bail, according to news reports. In the early morning hours of March 1st, 2008, two men burst into the Caffey home in Alba, Texas, and embarked on a horrifying and tragic spree. Both the two boys and their mother were taken. 
the father, Terry Caffey, received multiple gunshot wounds, but managed to drag himself from the house before it was engulfed in flames. The incident was unbelievable, but police discovered the family's own daughter, Erin Caffey, was responsible. It seemed incomprehensible. The problem started five months before the tragedy when 16-year-old Erin began a romantic relationship with 19-year-old Charlie Wilkinson. Neither of her parents approved of the relationship. Terry Caffey, who now speaks to youth about his experience, later said, Early on, I had reservations about the young man. There were just things about him that didn't sit right with me. Terry and his wife Penny hoped the flame of romance would eventually die out. They went about their normal lives with their other two children, Tyler, 8, and Matthew, 13. All the while, Aaron's behavior became more rebellious as days passed. Around March of 2008, Terry and Penny saw some social media posts from Charlie they found disturbing. Post referencing activities a 16-year-old girl should never be involved in. They pulled Aaron aside and told her she could no longer see Charlie and had to end the relationship. Two days later, Charlie pulled into the cafe driveway in the middle of the night with two friends, Charles Allen Wade, 20, and his 18-year-old girlfriend, Bobby Gale Johnson. A few minutes later, Aaron emerged from the house in her pajamas and got into the truck with Bobby as the two young men went inside. At roughly 2 a.m., the door to Kathy's bedroom burst open and Charlie and Charles began firing on Aaron's parents. More than 10 bullets entered Terry's body as he watched the same fate fall for his wife before one of the boys plunged a sword into her neck. As Terry lost consciousness, the two assailants went upstairs he heard his son, Matthew, cry out, screaming Charlie's name, and he suddenly knew who was in the home and why they were there. He later learned that they used their guns on Matthew and took turns using the sword with Tyler, who had fled to a closet. When Terry awoke, the house was in flames. He was able to climb out of a bathroom window and drag himself 300 yards through a forest to the neighbor's home. Wilkinson, Wade, and Johnson were taken into custody within three hours, but Aaron was not initially thought to be part of the horrifying events. It didn't take long for Wade to turn on her and spill the truth to the authorities. He told police that he'd been promised 2000 to help take care of business and that everything was Aaron's idea. The other two assailants provided the same information. Police picked up Aaron a few hours later, hiding in a trailer belonging to her boyfriend's brother. Her first story to the police was that she was made to participate. She said that she was being held against her will while her boyfriend slaughtered her mom, dad, and brothers. Eventually, she admitted to her part in the event and expressed remorse. Were you shocked to hear that your father survived? Aaron and Charlie both pled guilty. Capital punishment was on the table, but Terry lobbied for life sentences for both. Aaron received two consecutive life sentences plus 25 years. She must serve at least 40 years before asking for parole. In the ensuing years, she has done several interviews expressing her remorse and gratefulness for her father, who has stood beside her during the trial and sentence. Do you think it was right to charge Mason Sisk as an adult at only 14 years old? What about Aaron? Should she have received two life sentences when she never pulled the trigger? Let us know your thoughts below and get into the conversation. As always, give us a thumbs up if you like this video. And don't forget to subscribe so you never miss a story.